In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Southern Africa, which has its seat in Cape Town, South Africa, but its territory extends beyond the country of South Africa to include Eswatini, Lesotho, Namibia, and St. Helena. There are over three million Anglicans in this province, which is about twice the number of Episcopalians. Originally, the Anglican Church was established in South Africa to minister to soldiers whose task was to protect a society dependent on slavery for its existence. Most of the slaves were imported by Dutch colonists from other parts of Africa and India. In 1806, the British permanently took over the colony, a year before evangelical Anglican William Wilberforce convinced Britain to discontinue their involvement in the slave trade. In the 1830s, Britain abolished slavery altogether in South Africa, although racial injustice continued to plague the region. When the first Anglican bishop, Robert Gray, arrived, he only had 10 churches and 16 priests, but during his tenure, he expanded his one diocese into a province of five, including the Diocese of Natal, which was overseen by the notorious Bishop John Colenso. As bishop to the Zulu people, Colenso argued that polygamy should not be a barrier to baptism, and that baptized men should not be forced to separate from their wives, which would likely result in destitution for several women and children. Also, while translating the scriptures into the Zulu language and understanding Christianity anew in light of Zulu culture, Colenso argued that many stories in the Hebrew scriptures ought to be understood non-literally as myths, and he scoffed at the idea of a loving God condemning anyone to eternal punishment. Although many of Colenso's ideas might be considered popular today, he was declared a heretic in 1863 by the church in South Africa. Several overseas bishops asked the Archbishop of Canterbury at the time to address this controversy, and in 1867, the Most Reverend Charles Longley called the First Lambeth Conference, a meeting of bishops at the Lambeth Palace in London. Since 1867, Archbishops of Canterbury have invited bishops to attend this Lambeth Conference every 10 years or so, and these meetings now function as a key instrument for communion within the Anglican world. For this reason, Colenso has been called the unwitting architect of the Anglican Communion. Despite the controversies concerning Colenso, the church continued to grow, attracting members from both white and black communities, including one black member named Bernard Mazecki, who became a catechist, missionary, and then martyr during a rebellion in 1896. After being stabbed, his body miraculously disappeared along with the flash of a great light and a rushing sound like the fluttering of giant wings. In 1948, when the Dutch Afrikaner National Party gained a majority, apartheid laws were institutionalized and enforced by a brutal police state. Apartheid is Afrikaans for separateness or aparthood, and it not only meant keeping whites and non-whites separate, it also meant denying basic human rights to non-whites. Although the Anglican Church was officially against apartheid, there was some anxiety among the bishops about getting too politically involved. One notable exception was Bishop Trevor Huddleston, who was a vocal opponent to apartheid, explaining that, quote, any doctrine based on racial or color prejudice and enforced by the state is an affront to human dignity and ipso facto an insult to God himself. When the same Trevor Huddleston respectfully tipped his hat to a black female domestic servant, the servant's nine-year-old son witnessed this countercultural kindness with incredulity and deep curiosity. Huddleston eventually mentored this little boy, who later became a priest and the leading non-violent opponent of apartheid, and a Nobel Peace Prize recipient in 1984, and the first black Archbishop of Cape Town in 1986, and perhaps the most well-known and beloved Anglican throughout the whole world, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. When apartheid ended in the early 1990s, Tutu chaired the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which not only worked to establish the truth of what happened during the years of vicious racial violence, but to lay the basis for the start of an ongoing process of national reconciliation. 
The Church of Southern Africa was forced to struggle against a great injustice and emerged from the struggle against apartheid with integrity, which is why Harold Lewis sees South Africa as the church for the future and the crucible for Anglicanism in a new century. Although the legacy of apartheid left most of the land and wealth to a white minority, and many white members feel alienated by the political character of the church, the province continues to forge ahead by supporting the ordination of women and the full recognition of gays and lesbians. May we keep all this in mind as we hold the Church of Southern Africa in our hearts.